Hello, everyone. Dr. Victoria Scribo here, speaking to you from the Seeds of Transformation Healing Center in Wareham, Massachusetts. So um, a couple of weeks ago, I did a, a chart reading with the numerology and the Kabbalah for uh, Volodymyr Zelensky. Now, today is the 16th, and this morning he just had a uh, address to Congress, um, the Congress of the U.S. He addressed the EU, he addressed England, uh, Great Britain, excuse me, and then he addressed um, the U.S. today. I think it was yesterday or the day before, he had people, uh, he had the um, the leaders of uh, Poland and uh, Mold Mold Moldavia and Romania, I think, all the surrounding countries uh, to the Ukraine. Um, they actually went to Kyiv and uh, had an in-person meeting with him, which I think was uh, very brave of them and uh, very important in the in the uh, in the big in the big picture. What I want to uh, look at today is we'll look at Zelensky's chart with a different time. Now, um, when I did the, the, uh, the reading, uh, I went online and um, it was said that um, I was quoting an astrologer from an astrologer's page that said he was, uh, he said he was born at two. However, um, he had it as 2 a.m. As we look, and as most other astrologers are looking, they're looking at a 2 p.m. chart. So I want to go over that chart with you uh, as well. And in a lot of ways, the 2 p.m. chart um, does, does in its way um, fit him maybe a little bit more as, you, as we learn more about him. So uh, let's pull up his chart to start here. Okay, so here we have uh, his, um, the new chart we're going to work with. Uh, and of course, it's the same date, it's just a different time. We have him born at 2 p.m. in the Ukraine, uh, January 25th, 1978. And we see that he has a Gemini ascendant here. He has Jupiter in Gemini in the first house. As a Gemini ascendant, the ruling planet of his um of his chart is actually Mercury here in Capricorn. The interesting thing about um, having a Gemini rising is Gemini risings are pretty, um, there's a light, there's an airiness, there's a, there's a sense of um, a, you know, a childlike exuberance with Gemini. It's like nothing is very deep, everything is sort of surface. And there's of course a double uh, or um, a, a way of being that is, um, you know, varies. And Gemini is the sign of the twins. And so there can, there are two sides to this. Anybody has a Gemini ascendant, there are two sides to this, to this person, but the ruler of that Gemini ascendant is Capricorn um, in the eighth house here, Capricorn, I mean, Mercury and Capricorn in the eighth house. So Mercury and Capricorn brings uh, a serious ambition to things. And it's in the eighth house. And so this is somebody who thinks very deeply, uh, someone I believe who has definite um, perhaps opinions about things. Um, and it, in that eighth house, the eighth house, just like many of the other water houses, the, the fourth house and the 12th house, when planets are in there, there's, um, uh, it feels like it's, it's harder to see them for what they really are. Um, just like when you uh, look through the water and you're trying to, uh, say, spear a fish, right? Say you're, look, you're in the water, you're trying to spear a fish, you see the fish. In order to spear that fish, you have to take into consideration the refraction that's created by the water. So things where they seem don't actually, aren't actually where they are with that, with that symbolism. So there's a um, it's not really tricky. It's not, in, it's not like this person is trying to be purposefully uh, cagey here. It's just the nature of the nature of the position, I think, of his Mercury. And then, of course, Mercury and Capricorn thinks very seriously. So, so for somebody who, is, who came up as a comedian and an actor and all of this, there's a very, very serious undertone. So 
So this Mercury and Capricorn, what I think I'm trying to say is it belies a very serious individual, which we hadn't really quite met yet until, of course, Russia invaded um, the Ukraine when he was the president. Um, so we also have this Gemini in, um, I mean, excuse me, this Jupiter in Gemini. Now, whenever you have Jupiter in a sign, uh, whenever you have Jupiter in the first house or whenever Jupiter touches anything, things are like bigger than life, right? There's this bigger than life quality. And he certainly has the capacity to do that. I mean, the man is like five foot seven, but he seems seven feet tall sometimes, right? So that we have that Jupiter. Jupiter in Gemini is also power or expansion through the media. And he himself had created his own sort of media empire uh, he, in, in a lot of ways, and hopefully nobody gets offended by this, but in a lot of ways, uh, he sort of went the same route as Donald Trump did in the U.S. And that he had this show that gave him a persona that everybody like could see this was the persona. And people like, yeah, that's the guy. That's the guy. So it, it, in a way, he created this mystique around himself that he could be the person to uh, lead the country out of the old ways of doing things, right? Uh, into a new sort of, into a new dawn or, or a new dawn for, um, for the Ukraine. But I, I, I think that there's things that needed to be settled, scores that needed to be settled, things that needed to be resolved. And he does have his, uh, he has his North Node here in Libra with a conjunction to Pluto. In the, in the fifth house here, the fifth house is the house of actors, right? So he has Pluto in Libra in the sign of actors. So he's somebody that people would be magnetically attracted to and would be very, wanted to want to talk to. Like everybody wants to talk to this guy, right? Uh, Libra. Libra is about dialogue. And when you have Pluto conjunct the North Node, which he does, he has spent uh, previous lifetimes moving in the direction of Libra, which is about balance and talking it over and coming to the realization that you do live in a world with other people. And so we need to take into consideration that he does have a South Node in Aries. People with South Nodes in Aries are often um, you know, if you look at a, a um, if you do past life regressions with people with that south node in Aries, or very often, um, and I'm not talking about past life regressions where you guide them, but where they themselves guide you, um, will often see lifetimes as a soldier, or or you know, having to to express that martial energy. The ruler of his south node in Aries would be his Mars. And here he has Mars in Leo. Now, Mars really likes being in Leo, I would say. Mars generally likes being in fire and Leo is the, is the, the king, right? The king, but we do have a retrograde. So this is somebody who, in order to sort of exert himself, he needed to, in his way, I think, do stuff under the radar. So um, what, a what a retrograde Mars does is it makes you more considered. It makes you a great statistician, not a statistician, strategist. That's the word I wanted. Uh, strategist because Mars retrograde always sort of has to wait for things. It never just like, you can't just go get it. It, it sort of in its way has to come to you. The opportunities have to come to you. And when the, uh, when the right moment is right, you, you will, uh, you jump into that, right? So with that, with, I think with that, um, that retrograde Mars, the ruler of his North node is his Venus. And of course he has Venus conjunct his son in that ninth house of truth. So in his way, he is a symbol of the truth of the matter, the truth of the matter. He does have his, um, his moon now, we, we, because the, it, we're taking this as his accurate chart, we're sure that his moon here is at about 18 degrees of Leo. So this is somebody who's very, very courageous. His moon and sun are in a full phase to each other. 
And when you have a full phase lunation cycle, you have come in to this lifetime to put something out there, to, to, to put it out into the world, put it out into the world. And what he's putting out into the world is his love for his country, um, Moon and Leo, and his courage, Moon and Leo. Um, he also has a Saturn in Leo. That is also retrograde, interestingly enough. Um, usually when things are opposite the sun, they will be retrograde, okay? They will be retrograde. This Saturn in retrograde, Saturn in Leo retrograde, so Saturn in Leo could also be somebody who feels like they're an authority. It's like the king, the king is here, right? But it is retrograde. When Saturn is retrograde or any planet is retrograde, they have more of a Uranian flavor. So they're more likely, whereas Saturn deals with the structures, the tried and true, the traditional stuff. When it's retrograde, this person generally is open to a different way, a new way, a more Aquarian or Uranian way. Now he is an Aquarius, his son and Venus. So he values those Aquarian principles of, of liberty and justice and perhaps rule of law and humanitarian and working together in groups and you know raising all boats, all the very Aquarian things. Um, and then of course he has his son there as well to illuminate that. The sun isn't particularly powerfully placed in uh, Aquarius, because it is in its, in its um, is it its detriment or its fall? I always forget that, but it's not as powerfully placed. So, and, and the sun in, in um, the sun in Aquarius isn't that egoic generally. Uh, it is, you know, the, um, sorry, Leo, the opposite sign is very much the ego, but that sun in uh, or any planet in Aquarius sort of brings out, like sort of evens that out a bit. So he's less likely to do this for his own sort of ego. What I feel like he's really trying to accomplish just in general is to get the message out of a better way. And of course, people who were indoctrinated in the old way don't necessarily appreciate that. And there's definitely, um, I mean, Russia has been in the Ukraine for what is it, eight years now, since 2015, or was it 2014, where they did the first, uh, where they annexed Crimea and they went into the, uh, uh, the two regions closest to Russia, what is it, Donbass and a different, and, and I don't know the other region. Um, so, so they've been there, but I think <laughs> this guy really, really pisses off Vladimir. Now, when I did the original reading, I think it was the original reading, one of my uh, watchers um, said that Vladimir means uh, ruler, ruler of the world, I think, or ruler, that name. And Volodymyr and Vladimir are the same names. It's just one's Ukrainian and one is Russian. And Vladimir Putin's name is Vladimir Vladimovich, the, the Putin, sorry, Vlad. And Volodymyr Zelensky is Volodymyr, it's Alexander, but I'm not going to say it because I'll kill it, right? His middle name is Alexander, although it's done in Alexandrovich or something like that, right? And then Zelensky. So Alexander means protector. So we have conqueror, conqueror Putin, and conqueror protector Zelensky. So thank you uh, for my reader, uh, for my watcher who told, who explained that to me. Uh, it was very um, it made a lot of sense to me as well. So, so that's that's pretty neat. Um, so today, Zelensky did a um, he he spoke to the United States. Congress. Now, I looked at uh, Zelensky's um, astrocartography. Now, I am by no means an expert in astrocartography. So, so if you're going to ask me questions about it, I'm, I'm a, probably can't answer them. But what I did notice is that his natal Mercury, Zelensky's natal, natal Mercury line runs right along the east coast of the U.S., very, very strongly in places like Boston and Washington, DC. Um, 
so the whole sort of power where the power lies on uh, in the United States that that his mercury sits there. So his words, the things that he says really do affect the power players within the country of the US. People are hearing him and actually the world is hearing him. And the difference, um, you know, there's a lot of places on the planet that are going through similar things. Ukraine isn't the only, it's the most recent. Uh, but it is the closest to, you know, it's it's in Europe, which is different. There's a lot of, there's things going on in, in the uh, in the Middle East. There are things going on in, in uh, Yemen and um, uh, Myanmar. And there's all kinds of, of uh, places where people are like standing up and saying no to oppression and, there's a lot of suffering going on and a lot of war zones. And you say, well, why is this Ukrainian thing like the, the thing that we're paying attention to? I think it has to look like us to a certain, it has to look like the people in power. Let's put it that way. Because I could say it has to look like us, but many of us already look like, you know, the people getting demolished in these wars that nobody's paying attention to. So I think that the Ukraine in its way is, a, re, a, a reminder of the horrors of war that we can hopefully take the lessons of and apply to other places on the globe where we may actually be, be um, either benefiting from the suffering of others or part and parcel to the suffering of others. And of course, I cannot, I can't say that without mentioning the situation in Yemen, um, which of course now the president of the United States has to do be nice, nice to the Saudis. You know, honestly, it really comes down to energy and resources. And um, one of the things that we could, we could change this through the way we uh, create energy on this planet. And um, a lot of the wars, certainly the war in Afghanistan and Iraq, especially, was, were, were, were wars about oil. And it's very possible that this one is as well, ultimately, and resources. So people suffer so that uh, the, the titans of the industry can uh, continue being the titans of the industry and go against perhaps what people really might want in their world, which is a world where we can breathe the air and still live a decent kind of life. There are, there are things out there, there are, there are ways of being, there are ways of doing things um, that we could change that. Um, but it has to first come with the awareness. And you know that's, that's my take on it, but let's take a look at something very interesting here. So one of the things that I wanna look at here is how, his speech today, um, uh, uh, what aspects were happening to his chart during his speech. So let me, um, let me just do this here for a moment. Okay, here we go. All right, here's the speech. And let me find Volodymyr. I think it's this one. Yes, okay. I'm gonna swap this. Okay, so here is Zelensky's chart. Um, oh, hold on one second. One second here. <laughs> I didn't wanna do that. <laughs> I'll be right back. So um, this is actually the speech. This is the time that uh, Zelensky gave a speech to Congress this morning, nine o'clock in the morning, Eastern time, Washington, DC. This is what the chart looked like. Now, I just wanna point a couple of things out. I wanna point out the degree of Jupiter. Jupiter is at 18 degrees of Pisces. And I also wanna point out Black Moon Lilith. Black Moon Lilith at 2644. Now I'm going to uh, remember where that Black Moon Lilith is because 
for some reason, this is uh, Zelensky's chart. This is the chart of the day. For some reason, Black Moon Lilith does not come out um, in this chart per se. Black Moon Lilith sits, it sits right here on um, Zelensky's Jupiter. Remember, Jupiter is how he, you know, Jupiter in, in, um, in Gemini is this energy of uh, spreading the word, right? Spreading the communication. Now, I don't work with Black Moon Lilith all that much, so I did a little research myself here. Let me, let me, um, and I'll tell you where I got this from as soon as I access it with my other computer here. Okay. Nope, that's not it. Okay, so I get, I got this from Astro Deanst, and, um, what is Black Moon Lilith? So to properly understand an astrological point and to be able to more accurately interpret it, we astrologers must, as a basic principle, take into consideration the astronomical perspective of such a point. Uh, let us look into the celestial mechanisms and astrologistics before we enrich our understanding with considering considerations of mythology and other sources of knowledge. Um, Black Moon Lilith is actually the lunar apogee. It says the astrological point we call Black Moon Lilith is the lunar apogee, a virtual point in the moon's orbit around the earth, which marks where it is as it's furthest from our planet. At this point, the moon also escapes, but is pulled back into orbit by gravity. It is precisely at this point where gravity shows its force, pulling the moon back towards the earth. So we, here we have the first basic concept to consider the question of mass and distance, mass and distance gravity. Um, so there is this gravity energy, this pulling back to reality. And so what his words do is that in, in their way are pulling us to the reality of the situation that we face. It's in our face, we're seeing it happen, even though we're seeing it happen um, on television, most of us, but it's happening, right? So there's, there's a gravity to his voice. The other thing that I want to point out, and uh, let me see if I can, um, I want to share another chart with you. Let me see if this is it. So um, this is the chart of the US. Okay, this is a chart of the US. And here's the sun here, uh, Jupiter, Venus, and Cancer. We have this, the Sag rising. This is this, what we call the Sibley chart. Here's Pluto. We're having our Pluto return. Here's the moon in Aquarius um, for, for the US. So I want to um, show you the progress chart of the US. And in the progress chart of the US, the sun is at 18 degrees of Pisces. And if we go back to this, we see that Jupiter is at also at 18 degrees of Pisces. So Jupiter in the sky is actually conjunct the progressed sun of the US. So there is this energy of compassionate expansion, right? But it can also be somewhat of an energy of things are so expanded that we can't actually bring them back together, right? So this is definitely sort of a double-edged sword kind of energy that we're dealing with. One of the other interesting things is tra the transiting planets around Zelensky's chart bring Saturn right over his MC. So Saturn is an authority and he is in his way acting as an authority uh, for the experience that the people in the Ukraine are having. And then the experience that we sort of, we might all have if we're in the same situation, wherever you happen to be. And so today in his speech, he, he looked to 
um, 9-11 and he mentioned uh, um, um, Hawaii, Pearl Harbor talking, you know, he wants a no-fly zone, which as is its own can of worms, right? But he's talking about terror coming from the sky. So he he connected us to that. When he was talking to to Britain, uh, the the Great Britain, he was he was he was doing a Churchill thing, right? So this is somebody who knows how to say what he needs to say to get people emotionally uh, involved in the situation. And more than um, us getting just involved in the quagmire of war, um, I think we could look at this in the, as a direction of us um, preventing or actually seeing, right? Seeing what it is that is happening and how out the way we rule and the, and the people in power and the decisions that are made uh, affect the, the people on the planet. And so it's sort of a new people's revolution on some level, um, or certainly uh, we're looking to that. So I just thought that was really, really interesting. Of course, Venus, transiting Venus is on his Venus. Mars is on his Venus, his son Venus. This is, you know, Uranus can be tele television. So this is like, um, this sort of bodes well for him in, in the respect of uh, him being a symbol of perhaps a new way of, um, of allowing people the rights to their land, allowing people the rights to their autonomy. Um, living with trying to live in peace and not have these people just going around and deciding that they just want your land, which of course is imperialism, right? It's it's empire, and um, you know this could be the end of the empire that is the Soviet Union, but it can also be this is the end of the empire of the U.S. We are going to have to move into a more uh, cooperative relationship with not just each other on the planet, but with the planet itself. And this kind of destruction and waste of, of potential and waste of, I mean, people just want to breathe free, right? We can't even hardly breathe. So um, these are sort of the, these are sort of the things that I'm seeing in this chart. So um, Hopefully this was a little enlightening to you um, to see the energies that are um, expressing themselves at this time. Of course, we all want peace. Uh, we all want to see um, the, the, um, the conflict in the Ukraine end, um, pre preferably with a brokered peace. Um, And, and, and for the people to have, the vo have a voice. I do worry about Zelensky's safety. Um, and he has actually, his progressed son is at 20 degrees of Pisces right now, that 19 something of Pisces. So his progressed son and Jupiter are conjunct and conjunct the United States um, son. The thing with Pisces is Pisces can be the martyr. And that's what I don't, I wouldn't like to see, but I don't have all that much control over it. One way or another, his voice is being heard. And perhaps, perhaps the people who have the opportunity to change things are actually hearing him. Uh, but I know the people are hearing him. And I know that, you know, we're all hoping and surrounding the situation with light. Um, and once, you know, we have to also consider, you know, what our other policies are doing to other people in the world who maybe don't look quite as quite like the people who run the country. So, but we are shifting, our consciousness is shifting. And I think Volodymyr Zelensky is part and parcel to that shift. I think that he is uh, a light worker in his way. And uh, 
and you know hope in in despair that we can change things and it would be nice to see it perhaps start with the ukraine and then go across the world so that we can we don't have to hear about babies dying uh, it's interesting because one of the other things that Black Moon Lilith is associated with is birth and the actual creation of the child and how close to death that the mother gets during birth. If anybody has given birth or seen anybody giving birth, it is, while it's a miraculous thing and you sometimes you're like, wow, uh, it is a dangerous thing. It is a dangerous thing to give birth, to have life come through you. And Black Moon Lilith is, is also part of that. And one of the, the images, um, or one of the, certainly he did the whole, he did a video of all the, the horrors and images of war, of, you know, children in hospitals and, you know, putting, putting bodies in mass graves and, and the real horrors of, of what they are going through there. Stuff we need to see um, and realize is happening. And hopefully, we can raise our voices in a way that doesn't necessarily create World War III as much as, as it creates a need, a real understanding that we can't live this way anymore and we have to find a better way. And we'll find that better way together. And Pluto will be in Aquarius soon, <laughs> which is gonna be its own, you know, it's gonna have its own issues. Um, but we are evolving and we are evolving at the speed of light here, guys. So keep shining your light and uh, let me know what you think of this video. Uh, for those of you who are interested in taking an astrology class with me, I am going to be starting a new beginners class. I have a intermediate class that will continue um, in the next, uh, I think in the next week or two weeks, I'm gonna start that for those of you, you know who I'm talking to. Uh, and I've also had a lot of interest in uh, restarting my Kabbalah teachings. So uh, keep your eyes peeled for that. I know I've been promising that. But it's been, um, it, it's, you know, it's about organizing your life in such a way that it can support those things, right? Support the things that are important to you. And I'm having that, I'm having to do that as well, so. All right, guys, take care. Much love. Namaste. Um, Slava Ukraina. I think that's how you say it. Much love. Namaste.